Um, a couple of things. Uh, one, just as, a, uh, just as I was about to press record to film this little blog post, I saw an ad on television for Abilify. And uh, one of my degrees, as I, I think I mentioned online, is in psychology. So um, uh, obviously I know at least you know a fair amount about various psychiatric drugs. And Abilify was one of the drugs that was used, um, yeah, yes, hello, I've got a ferret at my feet right now. Um, uh, one of the drugs that, uh, uh, one of the new drugs to treat uh, schizophrenia is known as Abilify. And at least, it's been around for about a decade, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's called Aripiprazole, you can Google it, uh, it's online. Um, and I recommend that you Google it. Uh, I am so shocked, I am friggin' blown, mind blown, that they are advertising this on television. Vision. Abilify was a last course, uh, a last, um, uh, 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 a last resort. It, it, it was a drug of last resort. Its side effects are so nasty. It, it, in the world of uh, antipsychotics, it easily had the worst side effects. Two of the side effects, which are not all that all that uncommon, they refer to them as uncommon. But once again, I'm going on memory here. I remember one of these particularly nasty side effects happening in 12% of patients. That is not an uncommon side effect. In 12% of patients, is bordering on an actual effect. Um, so I, I can't believe that they're advertising uh, Abilify on television. It, um, Second, in a blog post that I did uh, a little while ago, I, um, uh, I talked about how I think that our educational system is failing to, um, our educational system is failing to teach kids why they need to learn. I recently read a book about, um, called Roar of the Tiger Mother, where a Chinese, or a woman is a, uh, I am pretty sure that she was Chinese, um, but uh, she was uh, enacting what she believed to be the correct course of action for parenting, which was uh, 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 Chinese-style parenting. Very, very strict. You know, you can't hang out with friends, can't do this, can't do that. You got to learn violin, got to learn piano, got to learn all that. The, the entire story was kind of an almost coming-of-age story for her, where she learned that, oh, these unbelievably strict ideas of parenting might not be the best course of action. I don't know why she needed to learn that by actually trying to teach her kid. The fact that Japan and South Korea have far and away the highest suicide rates for kids under the age of 18 or 15 or so. I can't remember which. It's either under the age of 18 or under 15. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. If you have kids that are less, if you have people that are under the age of 20 blowing their brains out, you've got some really serious problems, especially when you have it happening in large numbers. Um, and uh, in comparison to a more uh, laissez-faire sort of parenting style, I don't really see anything wrong with uh, uh, raising your kid in a relatively strict environment. Um, but it does raise the question of why are you doing this? What value, what life value do you hope to instill in them? Why are they learning this? What is the purpose of all of this? And that question is a really, really important question to answer, and not in the religious sense where our purpose is somehow divine or godly. The idea of purpose is a very, very complex philosophical issue, which actually brings me into uh, the, the, the next part of what I wanted to rant about, is that philosophy is, as I mentioned previously, kind of a, a red-headed stepchild in the world of academic inquiry. And it, it really gets a bad rap, but unfortunately philosophy professors are not helping it. We are, uh, I, I'm not a professor, if it is we, because I am in the philosophical community. Um, uh, we are uh, uh, like the, we're very much like the 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 not empty-headed professor, absent-minded professor. We're kooky and we're weird. We have a hard time associating with other people and socializing and all this other sort of wacky stuff. And uh, we don't help the situation where people seem to think that what we are talking about and what we are doing, oh, that's just. 
You know, that's the stuff that kooky people talk about. No, no, it's not. And it's also not very complex. It's actually very straightforward. Philosophy does not have to be this bizarre, abstract garbage that is spewed out in journals that, again, no one reads and kooky professors and all this other sort of stuff. And it becomes this conversational pariah. And uh, people are more than happy to talk about economics in mixed company. They're more than happy to talk about politics in mixed company. Uh, their child raising, uh, the environment, uh, uh, art, literature, they're more than happy to talk about all these. And all of them are, in my opinion, more complex a subject than philosophy generally is. Philosophy is a very straightforward thing. Sometimes it can get complex, but if you maintain good focus on what you're talking about and what you're doing, you never, uh, you, you, it never becomes terribly complex. Philosophy is straightforward. It is right out there. And confusion, as, uh, you know, as Wittgenstein famously put it, confusion comes from errors in language. And I don't entirely agree with that particular argument. You can look that up online for the details of it. Um, but uh, uh, confusion comes when, uh, I think, from a lack of focus in where you're going with the philosophical inquiry. And the professors and the teachers just have not, they were failing so badly in trying to get kids to uh, understand these things and uh, uh, just other people to understand these things. These are very important subjects and they're very accessible subjects too. The ideas of happiness and truth and justification and meaning and existence. These are not actually complex subjects and you can derive useful answers with a, just a modicum of thought and inquiry into it and unfortunately because the professors are just so friggin kooky we have managed to convince people that this level of inquiry is not something that they should be doing not something that they need to be doing and truly it's not something that anyone should really be doing only freaks are doing this stuff and uh, uh, we have we've got to work hard to fix that we've got to change that because uh, we have got a pestilence of uh, um, uh, two issues. We have got uh, increasing materialism, and I would not, I, I don't want to go so far as to say that we have decreasing happiness. I don't think we have decreasing happiness. I think that materialism is uh, simply a symptom of uh, an ongoing constant unhappiness in the same way that the American dream was a symptom of unhappiness and uh, uh, like un social upheavals are a symptom of unhappiness. People don't know what happiness is so they reach out into the world and then they find shiny things and that does something to the hind brain. It does something way back here that we don't fully understand, something very primal, but it gives us a little taste of happiness. Um, and. Uh, so we have materialism currently running rampant throughout our country, and I don't, and I, and that drive for materialism is being aided by an explosion in credit card debt over the course of the last 20 years. Um, uh, credit card debt and just debt in general going back into the early 1980s, and. Uh, uh, we are just, we're, we're making it worse. We're, we're making the materialism worse. We're making the drive for that sort of thing worse. And we're not making anything better. We're not answering questions for people. Uh, and the other thing that we have is we have a pestilence of religious fundamentalism in the country. And uh, religious fundamentalism, I mean, I, I am, uh, I'll say it right now because I'm going to mention it at some other point. Uh, I am more than just an atheist. I am specifically an anti-theist. And I'm not an anti-theist in the sense of uh, uh, Christopher Hitchens. Um, I, uh, uh, I use the term anti-theist as someone who holds the explicit belief that God does not exist and cannot exist. Um, and you know, I'll probably explain that position at some point in the future. And I think that all religion, all, all religious belief is fundamentally um, devoid of uh, philosophical inquiry because you cannot achieve a belief in God through philosophical inquiry. You have to go in with the belief.